there just give me one second here da, da, da. okay all right we're live soldiers here we are, right on time, exactly where we were meant to be. We're seekers, sages, warriors, peacemakers, rule breakers, fearless forces of nature, daily practitioners of radical kindness, compassion, and full belly laughter. We radiate grace through purpose and purpose through grace. We're quietly confident souls in service to source, living a life meant to be lived. So we close our eyes and breathe. Unmind the mind and let truth rise. Hi everyone, welcome to day five of Catalyzing Courage. We are, we're just pulling in all the stops this week. So we're really excited to have an incredible lineup today with Rolf Gates and Kevin Sport. I'm Ashley Malin, I'm the founder of Soldier and Soldier is short for soul journey. And we are all on one, especially right now, it's a real collective soul journey. So um, it's really great that we're able to come together and share our stories, share our um, our insights, and just share our practice with one another. Uh, being a soldier is somebody who's transcended a challenge and turned it into an opportunity, a gift, and is sharing that light with the world. And I've chosen, I've, I've like carefully selected all of the presenters because they all represent what it means to be a soldier. And so we'll find out from Rolf a little later, um, you know, a little bit about his backstory, but everybody who's presenting all week long has real uh, stories of courage that they've needed to use to get through challenge. Uh, today, we have just a few housekeeping things, the chat windows just for technical issues. Um, I hope you have a quiet space in your home that you're able to practice and it's really up to you how you want to use this next couple of hours. So have a journal, have a pen, glass of water, whatever you need, this is your time. Uh, most important part is that you enjoy yourselves and sometimes being sometimes being a soldier isn't always the easiest. And, and sometimes I ask myself, well, why am I on this path, honestly, but the rewards are that much greater. So, um, so we're gonna enjoy ourselves, but we're also gonna really look into our, the layers of our being today. The rest of the week is the next four days we have a killer lineup and we've got a special um 44 bucks for four i mean this this lineup is awesome tomorrow is a uh, dear friend keith mitchell his first yoga teacher chinook Woodzu, and we have music by kiyoshi that's kind of hip-hop spoken word awesome music so that's going to be a killer uh day we have that dude johnny and shay freedom who are cooking up some magic as well they're going to actually be in the same place and they've just met so a lot of these people too don't know each other which is when i find that when masters come together what happens is usually magic so that's kind of the little bit of element of unexpected that we're looking for as soldiers and then on Saturday is the Lion's Gate. That's the 8-8. It's a portal of energy that is the highest of the whole year. Um, if you've been looking at the stars lately, you'll see that Sirius is really bright. It's the second brightest star outside of the sun. So that day we have an awesome uh, uh, lineup of presenters with Monica Mesa Dasi, R.R. Shakti, Masood Ali Khan, uh, Sandra Small that you may or may not know, she's a total rocker, and then Dana Harper, who um, is also just super soul singer. So it's going to be a great lineup and hope you'll join us for the rest of the week. We love seeing you on social media and we appreciate you taking pictures of you practicing in your space and then tagging us at IamSoldier.com with uh, Catalyzing Courage. 
and uh, it really helps us to spread the word of who Soldier is. We're a new brand, and the more uh, love we get on from friends that love what we're doing, the the more appreciated we feel. So thank you so much for doing that. For the rest of the year, we are partnered with Tree Sisters, who are an incredible organization in the UK. It's all women run. And what they do is they empower villagers in the world, all over India, Asia. Um, there's 11 different countries that they work with. And so they plant, they, they empower women to educate their villages and then they plant trees and so one dollar plants two trees so if you purchased a package ticket we're already donating trees for you but um and if you are able to make donations even a dollar two dollars it helps to grow our soldier forest we have a goal um that we're working towards and we we feel that when we are healing people it heals the planet and so it's kind of a win-win for both of us so hope you'll help us there and today and all week long, the theme is courage. And when I thought of the lion's gate, I thought, you know, lions represent courage. And I love this word. It kept coming up like a hundred times. So I thought, all right, we'll do something around this. This is the first time we've actually taken a word and made it the theme for this long of a time. Um, but I, there's so many different facets of courage and how people have used it in their lives. And it could be big things, could be everyday little things. There's there's acts that happen on a daily basis. And so it's really great having such a culturally rich um, lineup of presenters, each giving us their perspective on this one word. So we're excited to see what Rolf has in cooking up for us. And uh, without too much more, I'll kind of let him take over. Uh, he's a I mean, a legend. I read, met his book, Meditations from the Mad, many, many years ago. And um, and it's a real honor to have him here, ex-Army Ranger, um, comes from a lineage of pastors. To me, people in, in recovery are some of the biggest soldiers that exist. That is no easy task. And um, I know that I, I'm also sober and that was uh, a hard decision to make. Um, wasn't out of necessity so much, it was more of a choice. And it's, it's a real, interesting um, dynamic living in our culture. So I really appreciate that he kind of comes from all these different uh, aspects of looking at courage. So thanks so much, Rolf and Kevin, and um, we'll just take it, let you take over from here. Thank you. Uh, so Kevin, do you want to just say hi and say a few words? Uh... Sure. Um... My name is Kevin Sport. Hello from Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Super stoked to be here. Um, do you want a little background kind of info or? Yeah, just, uh, I think, uh, just your thoughts. First of all, like what brought you here and then your thoughts on courage. Sure. Um, yeah, Talia invited me to be a part of this and uh, I was, uh, it just resonated for sure. I was super stoked and um, I've been thinking about the theme courage and the thing that most immediately comes to mind for me uh, in my personal life, I would say, uh, was my decision to relocate here to Colorado. Um, it was a real step off a cliff of the known into a complete unknown. I came here from New York where I worked as a full-time musician for over 10 years. And as my time there kind of went on, I became kind of less, less and less uh, at home there with the lifestyle, the pace. And um, I knew that I wanted to be closer to nature and I wanted to live in a small mountain town. And I've been spending a couple summers out here in Steamboat and it's checked a lot of boxes for me lifestyle wise. And I just finally got to the point where I was like, I know this is more the kind of environment that I want to find myself in. I had zero idea about any of the mechanics or logistics of how any of that was going to work. I didn't really know too many folks here, but um, I just packed up my instruments and my bikes and I drove out here and I just had to have that faith that, uh, you know, things would turn up for me and just trust that my intuitive feeling about being here was, was a good one. And it's been rewarding for me in ways that I expected and then also ways that have been completely unexpected. Uh, knowing that doing music full time would be fairly unlikely here, 
but then finding opportunities like what's happening today has just been um, super satisfying and more how I want to connect to music and how I want to connect to my community. So I guess, you know, if step one is, is courage, then it's kind of circling around to just this really um, fulfilling and satisfying feeling of gratitude about being out here and being able to participate in things more like this. Um, thank you, Kevin. Right on. Um, and so, yeah, um, what Kevin just did is kind of tee me up perfectly. My name is Rolf Gates and I'm extremely um, grateful uh, to have this opportunity and to be a part of this community. Um, I spent the morning thinking about courage and what Kevin really described was this willingness to follow your heart. Um, and so I'd say that's like the first thing, like uh, just to give you a sense, I'm gonna talk for maybe 10 minutes and then we're gonna practice and then we're gonna journal. At some point, my wife will be here to offer you an example of the poses. So if you don't understand what I'm saying, you'll be able to see her, she'll be here. Um, uh, so that's kind of the orientation. You're, you're in your 10 minute talk window with me, Rolf Gates. Um, so I was thinking about, uh, about courage. Oh, and the point of the talk is to kind of identify a skill that we're gonna refine through our practice. We're gonna practice a yoga skill. Um, so I was thinking about uh, courage. And yeah, there's like a million different ways to enter this. Like what Kevin talked about is really the kind of courage that we're uh, more often asked to have, which is the courage to do, to follow our hearts, right? Uh, the mind screams and the heart whispers. And so an element of courage is this inner listening, which really tees me up nicely, right? An element of courage is inner listening, okay? Listening to that whisper of your heart. But what I wanted to give you is just really a juxtaposition, an image of what came to me. I mean, this is like the week of John Lewis. Like John Lewis is like, it's not like, it's been my, my lifetime of John Lewis. In many respects, my life has been the life that I had wouldn't be possible without the efforts of, of his generation of people of color um, and the civil rights movement. And, um, but this particular week, he's, he's more present in my consciousness. He's never that not con present in my consciousness, but he's really present this week. Um, and what came to mind as I'm getting ready is there's this, you know, I have all the books and I've, you know, um, my father was a Unitarian minister in the 50s, 60s, 70s. And so the Unitarians were actually kind of allies to the, you know, to the civil rights movement. And so my parents were very kind of active in the way they could be um, when I was a young person. And um, so I was familiar with the civil rights movement. I actually remember, you're looking at someone who remembers the day that Martin Luther King died. I was, I was conscious when that happened. And um, I actually went outside and I was four years old. I went outside and got a flower, put it in a bottle of water and brought it to our kitchen table. And so, um, so there's a way that um, uh, the civil rights movement is something that, and kind of the, the profile of courage of it has been with me every day of my life. It's been like, this is the benchmark for what courage is. And so, um, so the images that were coming to me is, uh, are, are from those, those black and white photos. And if you look, no one's smiling, right? All the images of John Lewis that I had that flashed in my mind is someone who is not smiling because he's in physical danger and he's in extreme uncertainty. And so there's, when we think about courage, there's that piece where you're oftentimes in really physical danger, but certainly uh, in extreme uncertainty and you're willing to step into that. And I wanted to talk about this, the difference between say, what, what courage is as modeled by John Lewis and risk-taking. So I live in Santa Cruz, um, which is like a surfer town. And I, I moved here in my mid forties and I started surfing in my mid forties, which is, um, it's better than nothing. It's, it's, I'd rather have you start late than never at all, but certainly learning surfing in Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz is kind of renowned for big, heavy, cold waves. Um, uh, is it, it wasn't an easy process and certain yoga had a, a lot to do with my ability to do so without like permanently injuring myself. Um, but there was just a lot of risk taking. Like 
I literally would get in the car and go to the water's edge with my heart beating, you know, um, and, and putting on my wetsuit, it's cold water here. Like my heart would be beating, you know, and I, I would know that like, I'm going to go into this situation and I have no idea what's going to happen. And I'm just aware of this. But the reason that I'm doing it is for my own grat gratification, right? I was going out there for the excitement. I was going out for there for the self-esteem. Um, and I was doing it for no one else but myself. And I was willing to take a risk to get something. And so that would be like risk-taking. And it's, it's fine. I, I certainly hope that yoga helps you to take healthy risks, you know? But like what I was, me walking across the sand into the water is not what John Lewis was doing, right? John Lewis was accepting risk and uncertainty on behalf of the highest good of all. And this to me is what courage is, right? And uh, yeah, it can, be, it can be less dramatic than John Lewis, but there's a quality of selflessness that's present when true courage is what's being called upon. Yes, and going out in the ocean, I, I am accepting risk, but I'm doing it for myself so that I can feel better, whether it's the joy of riding a wave or, the, or that sense of, um, of self-esteem as I'm driving away at the end of it, like I was willing to do something scary, right? But this is like that private victory of taking a risk that makes you kind of feel good about yourself. John Lewis is taking a risk because he believed in something and he was willing to accept the consequences of believing in something. This is, this is the courage. Like I said, there's a lot of different types of courage. I would say Kevin believes in a certain kind of abundance or a certain kind of grace. And sorry to put words in your mouth, Kevin, but like he believed in something enough that he was willing to take a risk. And so, um, but I really want us to see that in life, we can be a little discerning and we can have self-honesty. And so there's the kind of the courage that it takes to walk across the sand into water. But like, why am I doing that? The discernment is like the why. It's because I want something. And I, and when I see those pictures of John Lewis, not unsmiling face, downcast eyes, he did not want something he believed in something and there's a difference to me and we can't really kind of intellectually ascertain that difference we have to kind of practice yoga to know the difference and so now i'm segueing into the setup for our class today it's like how do we know something to be true how do we know something is wise right how do we know something is courageous a true this is a courageous choice this is a wise choice. How do we know the difference between codependence and compassion? This is a compassionate choice. I'm, I'm acting from compassion, not self-protection or people-pleasing. Right? I'm acting from true compassion or I'm acting from true wisdom, which is usually gonna be both, and I'm acting from courage. Like where, where how do we know um, which choice we're making? And the way that we know which choice we're making is going to the place where choice lives in our life. We have to be where choice is act. Choice lives in our life. Right? And I can rest in the place that choice lives in my life. Where it lives is the present. I have to go into it's it's one of the if you were talking to me last week, I would have been like, well. You have to be present if you want to let go of attachment. That was kind of last week's lesson. I, I have it like every like three or four weeks, the lesson of attachment. Um, but uh, yeah, last week I was aware that if I want to let go of attachment, I've got to be present first. I can't let go of a, attachment theoretically. I've got to be in my body, be in my breath, be in the moment if I want to let go of something. Uh, and today I'm like, oh yeah, and you have to be in my body and be in my breath and be in the moment if I want to know wisdom, if I want to know compassion, if I, if I want to know true courage, uh, the courage of John Lewis. 
I have to bring my body, my heart, and my mind into one place. And so that's our theme. It's really the first step on the path to courage. I'm reeling things back. And um, I want you to um, reflect as you practice today on how we can arrive at the place that choice lives in our life and we can know we have. Not only can we arrive there, we can settle and rest in. I'm very excited about Alanis Morissette's song, um, A Blaze. I'm, I'm, very, I'm a blaze with that song. And, um, and she talks about rooting your core in oneness. And not like just temporarily passing by, but rooting your core in oneness. And so we cannot just arrive at the place that choice lives in our lives, we can root our core in it. And so that's the reflection for today. Hope that was 10 minutes. Let's take a deep breath in and a slow breath out. Good, and we'll start, this is called easy pose. And it's supposed to be easy for the body. So if you need to support your knees or have something behind your back, you're just gonna find a way to sit that is easy. My wife, Mariam, is taking an easy seat for her body. She'll be uh, modeling the poses today. Thank you so much for modeling. And so once you found that easy seat, we'll become still in that ease in our bodies in a way that brings a stillness and an ease to the mind. Sitting with a stillness and an ease that brings a stillness and an ease to the mind. Reflecting on the relationship between how we're being in the body and how we're being in the mind. And so the first step on the path to wisdom and compassion, courage and freedom is bringing the body, the heart and the mind into one place. Let's take a breath in and a breath out. We'll bring our palms together. Interlace the fingers and press your palms forward. And as you inhale, bring the arms up. As you exhale, bring the arms down. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, the arms down. On your own now, finding a movement that feels smooth. Let's just... Feel what smooth is like. Reflecting on the relationship between flow in the body and stillness in the mind. Let's take two more breaths, two more movements. And at the end of the second breath, at the end of the second movement, we're gonna come back into easy pose. We're gonna come back into stillness. And each time we're still today, I'd like you to imagine you're a glass of water with sand stirred up in it. We'll just allow our sand to settle and our water to clear. We 
Bring the body, the heart, and the mind into one place. Take a breath in. And a breath out. We'll bring our palms together. Take our left arm out, down. Take our right arm out. And as you inhale, bring it up and over. As you exhale, return. Inhale, up and over. Exhale, return. On your own now, smooth and complete. So now we're gonna bring a little wakefulness, not just to being smooth, but to the moment when the movement and the breath are complete. Filling into the relationship between flow in the body and stillness in the mind. Take two more breaths, two more movements. Finishing in easy pose, finishing in stillness, allowing your sand to settle and your water to clear. Noticing that as the body lets go, the mind clears. Let's take a breath in. breath out. We'll come in a child pose. And so to choose wisdom or compassion, courage and freedom, we have to move into the place that choice lives have to bring ourselves, our body, our hearts, and our minds into the one place, the place where choice lives in our lives. Let's take a breath in and a breath out. And we'll come up onto all fours. And as you inhale, bring your gaze forward and your heart forward. As you exhale, send your spine high, pulling your belly button up towards your spine. Inhale, gaze forward, heart forward. Exhale, spine high. On your own now, smooth and complete. The body, the heart, the mind in one place. On your next in-breath, we're gonna bring your hips forward, dropping your hips and opening up the heart, coming into a sloppy upward dog. And on the out-breath, you'll press all the way back to child pose. Inhale forward, dropping hips, opening up the heart. Exhale back and just do this on your own. Allowing the body to lead. I have a teacher in my life, which is, and she is working with me on a lot, allowing my body to lead so that I'm not just telling my body what to do, but I'm learning to listen. So we are listening inwardly. Two more breaths, two more movement. Eric Schiffman called yoga a process of listening inwardly for guidance all of the time. 
and then daring enough and trusting enough to do as you are prompted to do. Resting in child pose for a moment, really feeling this transition. Eric Schiffman describes the movement into stillness, really feeling the movement into stillness. Take a breath in and a breath out. Uh, let's come on to all fours. <clears throat> and we'll take your right arm forward and your left leg back. Inhale, get a little longer. As you exhale, knee to elbow. <clears throat> Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, draw in. On your own now, smooth and complete. The body, the heart, the mind in one place. We'll take two more breaths, two more movements. Finishing with the right arm forward and the left leg back. Inhale, together we get a little longer. As you exhale, come back onto all fours. And on your next in breath, you're gonna bring your weight into your left hand and take your right hand towards the ceiling. You're gonna root down to that left hand and up to your right fingertips. And we'll find the middle here between effort and ease that go a little too hot and celebrate the middle. Inhale, shine a little brighter. As you exhale, we'll thread the needle. We'll bring your right hand between your left wrist and your left knee. And we'll bring our attention to the place in the body where the in-breath begins. Following the breath from beginning to end. So before we can choose courage, we have to go to the place where courage lives in our life. We have to go to the place where choice lives in our life. Let's come back onto all fours. And we'll take our left arm forward and our right leg back. Inhale, get long. As you exhale, draw a knee to elbow. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, draw in. On your own now, smooth and complete. Bring the body, the heart, and the mind into the place that choice lives in our life. Two more breaths, two more movements. 